Okay, now we're ready. You ready? <clears throat> I'm not. <laughs> So, we'll start with playing to try and reel you in. Actually, you stumble across Low Effort Guide to Woodwind Doubling, or Lewd. That was unintentional, but it's amazing, so maybe there's a part of my brain that's actually working in the, uh, working in the background, you know, that, uh, that, uh, is helping me come up with amazing, amazing acronyms. But anyway, so, low effort guide to woodwind doubling. Bass clarinet. Now we're starting to get into the actual useful instruments that one might consider purchasing for themselves, specifically if you're a Barry sax player. A lot of big band literature, uh, for, especially when we get into some like Thad Jones, like Eleven stuff, there's gonna be a lot of doubling on the bass clarinet give it a more orchestral sound rather than the big brassy big band stuff. Um, so this is going to be mainly for those uh, people uh, who stumble across this video just to see, hey, I'm thinking of picking up, I'm playing the Barry at my local community band or I'm playing it in, uh, playing it at school, or I'm in a college ensemble or uh, what have you and they're like, you know, they suggested I pick up a bass clarinet. I don't know how to get the thing together. Now, granted, there's about 20,000 videos on YouTube right now at this very moment uh, discussing all, all about how to play this instrument and repertoire and things like that, but this is low effort woodwind doubling. We just want some basic information and we want to hear, we want to hear a man of a certain age stumble on his words talking about how awesome he thinks these woodwind instruments are and, uh, you know, and why maybe you should pick it up and how you get it started, how you get started. So I play a lot of Barry, actually, and uh, these two instruments are have a very, very similar in the bottom range, but the, uh, so you can actually think of a bass clarinet's range as a combination of a Barry sax and a tenor sax, because our top note, our top note without going into altissimo fingers is our clarion C which is the same as the second oct uh, third octave C, sorry, if you count the, uh, the low C. So your one, two, three, your third octave C on the, uh, on the tenor sax. So yeah, you got a, a pretty big range and altissimo is very easy and we can get into that later, but yeah, so how are we gonna set this thing up? So when you're starting out, when you're searching for a bass clarinet, there's plenty on, uh, there's plenty on eBay. There's plenty of uh, Bundys and Vitos, and actually those instruments, provided you set them up properly, actually play pretty good. I started out with a, uh, a Buescher made, um, it was, it's a Bundy, but it was uh, labeled Buescher. They used to make student horns for somewhere back in the day. Um, yeah, and there was nothing wrong with the horn. With those plastic horns, they can sound good when you set them up with a, uh, a, decent, a decent hard rubber piece. As far as what I got going on here, I have a chip to read. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't bother change it, changing it because it's still playing and we're just making a video, so low effort, guys. Low effort. I have it set up with a uh, Summer D, which came with the horn, and uh, actually, I really like it. It's not punchy like a, uh, a Van Dorn, but, you know, it, it has a, it's, it's, it's a little mellower little mellower on the top and it doesn't bark out the low notes so much but it does blend very well and you know when you are playing let's say you're a jazz musician about town and you're you're going to be playing with a band regardless of what mouthpiece you have even if the van doren adds a little extra punch you're not cutting through a band without amplif am amplification so keep that keep that in mind i'm trying to i'm trying to concentrate on keeping myself in frame here 
So my, uh, I don't keep doing this, you know. So you get a, you get a, a view of my chesticles. But anyway, um, so punchy or not, that's kind of a personal thing. I kind of like the little mellower, easier to blend. Uh, kind of a very a darker a darker sound. And I'm kind of also kind of kind of an Eric Dolphy fan, so I was kind of going for what he did. Now he played all Selmer stuff. I don't remember what mouthpiece he had though, and uh, you can go look that up. That's why we have Google now. But yeah. <laughs> bark it out too yeah but that's all that's all how you're working your throat in your uh, airstream and things like that you know you can even a little growling in the back of the throat and all, those, all those techniques that go for that work on sax a lot of them work very well with this guy too depending on what you're going for but okay so you want to set you want to set it up get a plastic instrument to start this is a uh, uh, old uh, buffet believe it or not from the 1930s it's not a radio model it does have some of the extra key work though we have uh we have our alternate A flat, E flat, uh, yeah, I was right. I was right the first time. I gotta stop second guessing myself here. A flat, E flat, you know, we have our alternate here. We key to low uh, E flat, which is the B flat on the Barry Sax. And, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Everybody knows what clarinet is at this point, but, you know, we're trying to get you set up to play, play your first band. So, the uh, actual setup here, summer D, which is... Uh, I, is it open? I think so. The Van Doren mouthpieces go a little, a little more open than this. So let's call this a medium, like a medium facing, a medium to a medium, uh, medium small facing uh, thing. It's a large chambered. It's a large chambered piece. Um, it is an old. It's an older S80. So uh, you know, but it plays very well. Uh, it's got some teeth marks and scuffs. I got it with a uh, Robner ligature. Just because they're easy, they're relatively inexpensive, unless you just go buy the uh, cheap generic ones, you know. But, uh, you know, they, it's, it's been working out pretty good for now. So, anyway, let's get you started. So, you got this thing in your hands, and you're like, Oh, that's, uh, that seems like the, uh, oh, that's the B on the Barry sax. No. Dear God, no, it is not. This is E. So this is going to be the first thing to mess all of you Barry players up. Provided, you know, you've never played clarinet before, like you didn't start on clarinet or whatever. This is going to mess you up. So the uh, clarinet, some hateful, hateful bastard, you know, four or five hundred years ago when they were developing these Chalmo or whatever, or maybe that came a little later, who cares? I mean, at this point, at this point, let the uh, historians, the historians deal with, deal with facts and whatnot. Um, decided that the instrument, as is for it to function the best, however, however that worked, it has to be pitched in twelfths. So we're not in octaves anymore. So, so where's C on this instrument? C, the uh, the mid the uh, middle middle C or its lowest C, particularly on this instrument. We don't have uh, I don't have a low C bass clarinet to show you, but call this the throat. The uh, the Chalmo range. So this is C right here. One, two, three, and then you have a uh, reg a key for your thumb, a thumb key here. So that's C. And when you add your register key, don't think of it. It's not an octave key, ladies and gentlemen. And everybody, we get a a. So if we have a C here, it's going to overblow a G written concert we have a B flat to F so it's gonna mess you up so the best thing you can do this is not a saxophone they are very different instruments see I'm as far as armature too don't forget you think it's a big old mouthpiece with a with a giant chamber inside but actually I don't see it I'm not taking a whole lot of that mouthpiece in and I have a firm not super tight, but a fairly firm armature here. But still, you know, and the reed is a Van Doren Blue Box 3. Um, depending on the style of neck you have on your bass clarinet, you can get away with tenor reeds. And I've played, uh, I've had great success with V16s. Uh, I used those for a long time, but the problem is, when I got this bass clarinet, um, this is, it's an old design for the neck, and I'm pretty sure some of the new ones still have, they have a lip here that doesn't allow you to put a really long reed on. And some tenor reeds are cut a little longer 
than bass clarinet reeds. And even these modern Van Dorns, these modern Van Dorn uh, bass clarinet reeds are right, they sit right at the edge. You know, so if the reed is too long, you're going to have to cut it down a little bit. Or it's going to get caught, it's going to get caught at the uh, little lip at the end of the neck where the mouthpiece meets. And you're going to leak. So that's something to bear in mind. I have a firm, I have a decently firm armature. But not super tight. And, uh, you know. Try playing legato, you know. And a good exercise. Uh, most the most clarinet teachers will show you this is to overblow 12s. So you start on your lowest note. Even if it's not a classically recommended fingering, you start on the bass clarinet's lowest note. In this case, on mine, it's an E flat. And we just add the register key and overblow. And you practice doing that up and down the chromatic scale. <laughs> Mine doesn't respond very well because right now I'm adjusting, I'm doing some adjustments on it where I have to do the octave mechanisms here. So that's uh, that's always fun. But if they're not opening up enough, like I'm having, I'm having on this particular instrument, a lot of notes are going to have a little in the upper register are going to be a little more resistant to speak. So uh, yeah, you know, but still, it's good enough. It's working well enough to show you. And this is. One of my, probably my favorite clarinet to play, even though, hey, go watch the uh, E-flat Contralto video. That's my very, very close second. But uh, I think maybe the next video we might do, so we did the low clarinets for the first three of these videos. So for the next one, I think we're going to have all three of them, or maybe we're just going to do a shootout with the uh, the bass and the contralto. Let me know in the comments what you uh, what you like. Do you want to shoot up with all three of the big boys or do you want a one-on-one uh, -on -one battle with the uh, bass clarinet and the contralto shootout, if you will? Because I was comparing the two a lot and I do tend to favor in a in a big band setting, even though this has been this has been the standby this has been the standard double. I think E flat contralto is a very good contender. But you can watch that video here, I hope, or here, here or here, wherever. I, I'm really bad at, at YouTube stuff. But anyway, okay, so we have our, uh, we're doing our octave exercises. Now let's talk about the altissimo briefly. Uh, it's a little different than your standard clarinet. Obviously there's a thousand videos you can watch on this, so we're just gonna go real fast through. Um, so on uh, a standard clarinet for C sharp, one, uh, two, three, one, two, and the E flat key, but here we have to vent. And on this, if you see right here, my light, let's see, do we get a little better, better lighting for this? So, see this key right here? It's got a little hole, right? That's our vent for our altissimo. So, we have to, in, for our altissimo fingerings, for C sharp and up, we actually have the first finger down. But you see here, it's got this handy little... Uh, extension here so when you're playing in the altissimo you shift your finger down it's the same as half holding on a recorder you shift your finger down so the vent hole is open and then you add two three one two and uh, your E flat key this is a little better in tune for me on this clarinet but then you can keep going You get all the way up to a, a sort of out of tune B flat, and but it's it's pretty easy and unless you do sil and since uh, you're not making any major adjustments to your finger placement, you gotta remember to use that because I kind of worked it out a little before and it's like I like that one better. So you can do a lot of a lot of silly stuff up there, and because it's relatively easy to play up there fast. Now, if you want in tune, go to a different video because that's not what we do here at Lude. God, I'm never gonna forgive myself for that one. But anyway, um, yeah. So as far as repertoire goes, there's a ton. There's a ton of repertoire written for you. Can go search all that. There's a, a ton of there's a ton of jazz musicians again. My favorites are Dolphy. Go check him out if you haven't. You know, but he is a main proponent of the, a main 
He's very well known for playing bass clarinet and alto sax and flute, and he played them all equally well. You should check out Eric Dolphy if you haven't before. Um, but worth, very much worth your time, especially if you're just picking this instrument up for the first time. And there's uh, tons of classical literature if uh, the jazz thing just ain't for you. But uh, yeah, so again, we're playing this instrument. It is not a saxophone. Think of it as a completely different instrument because when I started to play clarinet, I did not do that and it messed me up forever. So remember, this, the note that sounds that D concert is actually E on clarinet. This is C, not G. Only in the upper register. So we're pitching 12th. You gotta remember that. The best thing you can do, grab yourself a copy of the Close book, however you will. Um, I'm a One Piece fan, so I don't mind if you pirate, so long as uh, you know you don't you don't tell anybody about it. But there's places you can go to download it. And uh, the book is the it's like the Arban book for trumpet. You know, it is the main book for clarinet technique. And it covers beginner first notes all the way through crazy etudes and stuff. So go uh, find yourself a copy of that, however you can. I used to have an uh, original copy of the thing. It's big, huge, thick orange book. It was great, but uh, don't have it anymore. I mean, it's a loss of time, unfortunately. So, yeah, bass clarinet. Uh, very common double. Um, very interesting, very unique voice. It really sings up in the top registers, barks down below. Uh, very different. From the from a saxophone, even though it shares ranges with both the barry and the tenor, there are low C versions available. But for me, I'm just gonna stick with the uh, low E flat version because I have a contralto that plays re uh, pretty well. It's got some damage to it. I went over that in the uh, the contralto video. So, but I mean, it has it, it extends my clarinet ranges in this. I would call it a bass like uh, baritone through bass and I believe uh, some people call it a great bass to contralto, the great bass but so in this bass range I have the range all the way down to G flat uh, G flat one with the contralto so I can do I it's for me having a low C would be really swell but uh, it's not for me it's not very necessary and if people tell you you need certain types of equipment um, tell them, uh, get with the times, old man, because, uh, the studios are going. At least the traditional, the traditional, in the traditional sense. Um, a lot of it's going to be home recording. Like, I have a little setup over here to do, to do woodwind tracks for people. I have, uh, check out the website, too. It's, uh, here. Or here. Or you might just find it in the comments. Um, you know, but check out the website. I put, I put up a bunch of ballads, you know. Because I think that's a good way to show off a range and a tonal quality of the instruments and the fact that I can play them in tune when I'm actually focusing on trying to really center my pitch, you know. But, uh, yeah, yeah, fun instrument to play. Um, played bass clarinet for years. Not, not my main, not my main axe, but still I can get around, it, get around on it. I'm not going to be playing giant steps on this. That's not the goal. You know, the goal is to just honk, honk out a bunch of, uh, a bunch of stuff and have a good time. And that should be the goal with life and music. Don't do it because you, uh, don't do it for clout. Don't do it because you want to be famous. You won't be. Um, just, uh, just do it because you like making stupid noises and, uh, irritating your, irritating your neighbors or parents or whoever. Um, but yeah. <laughs> much to be said that hasn't been said or said better in a thousand different videos so go watch those too um have fun doing your searches and again um you know it is a common double but don't start out with something cheap find the bass clarinets the, the uh, plastic ones for well under well under a thousand dollars and uh unlike mine which i constantly have to baby it and soak it in almond oil and all sorts of crazy stuff um you don't have to worry about a plastic instrument cracking and if you want a good lead on a hard rubber instrument, the Rittenauer bass clarinets are fantastic. Um, they are pricey though, or a little pricier. There's a Kessler Custom, I believe, as well. They're bass clarinets that are kind of on the low, low end. I would call them low end professional, advanced student professional instruments. 
Rittenauer is a professional horn, but with the Rittenauer, it has, it, with, they're both key to low C, but neither of them have rollers for their uh, low C, C sharp, and D. So it's a little clunky getting around. Now you got the Selmer, uh, Selmer Privilege and the Buffet Prestige. You know, those are the top, top of the top end. You got Yamaha Step a hair below that. I believe they all have rollers, but I don't remember what the buffet looks like, and I was too lazy to look it up in the video. So, uh, yeah, go find out for yourself. Low effort, woodwind, doubling, lewd, for short. Um, I still, I still never forgive myself for that, but we're keeping it now, because uh, why not? But anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Bass clarinet, solid double. Great voice, really fun, very flexible, a lot of stuff you can do, tons of tons of literature written for it, but also a not super popular instrument for jazz, but yet still very fun, you know, and uh, something worth considering, especially if you play Barry. And it's, in my opinion, easier to play than the uh, than your soprano clarinets, which we'll get to soon we're just uh, literally how i'm structuring this stuff is we're going from the very bottom because i need content for the channel and i asked a bunch of stuff you know i took off all the old videos because really no one watches music but you know maybe someone will get some sort of uh help from a video like this instead you know so we'll just do these i'll just do each one each instrument in my collection we'll just go through we'll talk about it as best i can and uh it's pretty much uh pretty much all we got yeah, the time, timing was good for the computer screen because I'm done too. So, uh, anyway, watch the other videos. I'll put a playlist up here. And, uh, yeah, Jazz Lords. See you for the next one. Love y'all. Bye-bye.